Okay, you got that new piece of RAM and you want to dial it in, but maybe, maybe you don't know all the characteristics that you need to choose. Today, I'm gonna to go through how to use Typhoon Burner in order to diagnose exactly what your RAM is capable of doing. I'll show you how to export that and import it into one Osmosis RAM calculator. And from there, we're going to get very specific recommendations on the settings to use for an individual piece of RAM. I am the Graying Tech, a gaming insider. If you would like to learn how to improve your gaming performance, start now by clicking that subscribe button. As several people pointed out to me, Typhoon can do a little bit more than what I gave it credit for in the previous videos that I was running. So you can see here, I have my G Skill RAM. I have not down this RAM in as of this point, because I wanted to test this method. What is this method? If you open up Typhoon and select read, it doesn't matter which of the DIMMs you choose, and then you click report. Scroll down to right here where it says show in nanoseconds. And then you're gonna export the complete HTML report. Next, open up DRAM calculator for Ryzen by one Usmus. Now you'll note Zen 3 is not on here. There is no still update. So a lot of people are running into this problem and are trying to use this method in order to figure out better timings for these faster RAM modules. So we're going to import XMP profile. You're going to choose the HTML file that you exported. Open that and you'll see these manual values have now been entered in. Now I have the frequency here set to 3.8 gigahertz. I am running two DIMMs and I do have dual ranked. You might have to fill this in manually as well, along with the motherboard chipset that you have. Then if you click calculate save, now you're getting some additional values, which is awesome. Great, right? Well, here's the problem that I ran into. This module, no matter what, will not run at 14 cast latency. I can decrease the overall frequency to 3.4 gigahertz and it still will not run at 14 CAS. So I know that this number here is not going to be valid and it doesn't matter if I click fast or if I click safe, the primary values here are not changing. So what do you do? Well, you can't use this methodology in order to do that test. You can try, you can run these numbers and uh, increase your cast latency to 16, but as you can see here, the write is 17, the read is 18, the RP is 17, the RAS is 36. So these numbers are not as tight because it's depending upon this very, very low cast latency. Instead, what I would recommend is going back to our manual dialing in. We know this is BDI, we know this is prime, it is dual ranked. We're gonna run this at 38, and we're going to use two DIMMs. And now I have a new set of numbers. In this particular instance, I would recommend using these numbers as the first set that you're going to adjust. I'm going to use the same exact methodology that we used before. I want to pause for a second. The other thing that you could do, because this is supposed to be 4,000 hertz RAM, is you could put in 4,000. Now, when I did that, I got this message not supported. Well, it says it's fast. Okay, then I click fast, not supported. Well, it also said that it had to be series two or, or B2, not supported, not supported. So it doesn't give me the information that I need. I also happen to know something particularly annoying with this RAM is it does not like to run at the 4000 limit. Either the motherboard or the chip itself or the RAM, most likely it's the chip, just doesn't want to run at 4 gigahertz for the RAM speed or for the flack. So, bummer, I can't run at the label version of this RAM. So in order to get the most performance out of this, I'm going to still leverage this information. I'm going to run it at 3.8. I'm going to run it first as safe, and then I'm going to try fast. And then the other thing that I'm going to try adjusting here is the read to 16. And that's exactly how I would dial in my RAM if 
this methodology doesn't work. If you are looking for these faster modules, this is the route I would encourage you to go in order to try to get that to work. So as you can see, not all techniques work 100% of the time, but I think that this is a pretty good methodology so long as both Typhoon Burner and the DRAM calculator properly recognize and dial everything in for the RAM that you have. Additionally, I want to clarify just a little bit about what I was talking about towards the end. You see, this RAM module will not run to the box speed. It will not do 4 gigahertz with a 16 cast latency. Additionally, it won't run a 14 cast latency, which means even if I drop the speed down a little bit, I can't make up for that by decreasing the latency a little bit more. So in that particular instance, all of the other numbers that I can optimize are going to be centered around that 16 cast latency. So what I chose was 3.8 gigahertz, 16 cast, and pretty much 16 across the rest of the board in order to get the best performance that I think I will be able to get out of these RAM modules. Will that impact gaming performance though? That is the exact thing I'm going to dive into in one more video on RAM. I'm going to look at 36 versus this new G Skill RAM and see if we actually made a significant enough difference to justify all of the extra labor. When I post that video, you can check it out right here.